Greetings and salutations, viewers. Welcome to another episode of Game Break. I am Charles coming to you today with Planetarian, the Reverie of a Little Planet. Last time round, we made it to the outer dome gate bridge thing. But <laughs> there's a fiddler crab in our way. Not quite sure how this is going to go down, but I doubt it's going to end peacefully. Speaking of endings, let's find out if this is the end for our characters or not. Will we be able to get past the Fiddler Crab? Will we be able to save our new friend? Or is it all going to go to pot? Let's see. I surveyed the scene with my binoculars once again. Where had it come from? When I had entered this city, there had been no indication that there were any automatous, autonomous defense patrol activity in this area. It was as if it had come out to set a trap for me while I was in the planetarium. But if that were the case, then there would not be just one mech lying in wait. It was also possible that it had entered solo operations mode after the power to its nest had been cut off. If I could not silence it with my first shot, then it was very likely that it would call for support from its comrades in the vicinity. If I chose to fight, then did I have a chance at victory at all? As Fiddler Crabs were designed as defensive fire support platforms, they had been built largely without taking close proximity combat into consideration. I knew of a few weak points, but there was only one that could be pierced by a 40mm grenade. I would have no choice but to aim at the ammunition bay hatch located at the top of the barrel apparatus. There was probably about a 50% chance, no, more like a 30% chance that I would actually hit it. Given that, could I take a detour? Would I be able to cross past the quarantine wall at any other point than that rift? No. If I just walked around blindly, then the danger of running into an enemy patrol would just increase but it would be suicide to pass the night here as well. Hmm. Question time! You don't understand the basic concept of hunt? I'm s well, um, why would you need to know that as a planetarium assistant and whatnot? So, fair enough. I put away the binoculars. She continued to look on with a very curious air. That was just as well, for I myself did not have the confidence to tell her what was going to happen after this. Okay. Maybe she'll actually be good and listen, but realistically, probably not. So this is how I should have ordered her about. All the uneasiness I had felt just melted away. But finally, there remained one thing I had to do. What is her plan? Uh, I mean, we kind of destroyed the uh, power source. And there's no way to really recharge you at the moment. So, whatever you're running on, that's all we have. I kept trying to tell myself that this was just a machine, that her responses to me were nothing more than algorithmic responses to my observed speech and conduct. 
And then she spoke. <笑>私の基本データベースおよび現在までの蓄積データベースを照合しますと、家庭電に関してですが、送電が回復するまで私も家野さんも。ファーナフ。これから俺の言うことをよく聞いて。はい、わかりました。ここに来るまでお前が見
but once I fired, I would most definitely be detected. Although I had two more AP cartridges left, I did not think it was likely that I would have a second chance if I did not manage to disable the Fiddler Crab with my first shot. I closed and cocked the grenade launcher, and then raised the long distance sight. I calculated the distance to my target and the ballistic subsidence rate and corrected my aim accordingly. This grenade launcher was equipped with neither tracer functionality nor a ballistic stabilizer. The stopping power of the cartridges and the construction of the gun stock itself were unchanged from the designs of last century. After all, the simpler an armament was, the easier it was to trust it. That was the only rule of social discourse that the unceasing rain had imparted on me. Don't miss. I lowered my head and braced the gun barrel against the window frame and carefully adjusted my aim. The rain was continuing to fall. The wind was intermittently and weakly blowing from left to right across the buffer zone. There was still no indication of movement from my target. The wind kicked up. The muddy water to one side began to ripple like the scales of a fish. I waited for the wind to die down, my fingers still tense on the trigger. And I suddenly realized that I was thirsty. Not even the first time when I fought a warmonger so long ago had I felt so nervous. Before I could wonder why, I found myself thinking about her. She was probably standing stock still in the middle of that soaked sidewalk right around now, in accordance with my order. Even though I had brought her along with me, I had still not thought of what I was going to do with her. It was just that I could picture what would happen to her if other junkers happened upon her later and harvested her. A charging apparatus would be expensive, but not so much that I could never procure it. While it would be difficult to update her software or replace her parts, I could probably at least do some maintenance and minor adjustments for her. For that matter, it might even be possible to procure a small projector for her. Of course, an umbrella-like device with a hemispheric spread would also be necessary for the projection. With those two things, we could travel from settlement to settlement with her commentary. We could show the people the starry sky. What if I changed my profession? We might even be able to reach every place where people still live by the time I die. And in any case, I was sick and tired of being a junker as well. First, you gotta take out the Fiddler Crab. Take out the Fiddler Crab and then we'll talk. Take out the Fiddler Crab and we can talk. They were all just proof that I was starting to think that I couldn't die here. These thoughts didn't feel that bad though. The wind weakened and finally died down like the last faint breaths of a dying old man. The fiddler crab was still aiming its main cannon out the rift in the wall, waiting for the arrival of enemy mechs. This better work. I held my breath and squeezed the trigger. The warhead billowed white smoke as it flew and hit the rear of the Fiddler Crab's railgun. However, nothing happened. I could see the Fiddler Crab's frame trembling violently, as if in it's anger. Like I rolled to the side and concealed myself against the wall. I cracked open the barrel of my grenade launcher and removed the empty cartridge. Having expanded due to the heat, the shell fell into a puddle and there made a hissing sound. I had two cartridges left now. Along with the metallic sound of machine guns firing, material from the ceiling began falling around me. The outer walls of the building were being raked with machine gun fire. An eternity of time seemed to pass before the first fuselage died down. I sprinted and looked out the window on the other end of the room. I quickly swiveled my head and took stock of the situation. 
the fiddler crab's stance had changed. It had locked its leg, legs and connected the wheels on the undersides of those legs to the ground. It was now entering evasive action. When I leaned forward in order to take aim again, it recommenced its machine gun barrage. The concrete around me, soaked with rain, was so riddled with holes that it was as useless as a sponge when shielding me. If I stayed here, this room itself would soon fall prey to the storm of 13mm rounds. I flattened myself and scrambled towards the stairs inside the building. The rain continued to fall. I thudded onto the sidewalk with my head bowed and strained my ears past the sound of rain falling. The high-pitched whine of a low-noise emission motor and the sound of sludge being ground under its well-maintained wheels. Sounds that I had heard countless times before, but could by no means ever get used to hearing. My field of vision opened up. There was an abandoned commuter train sitting in the middle of a two-lane railway line. I concealed myself and took stock of the situation. The fiddler crab was moving rapidly, its four legs tracking through the mud with ease. Just when I had thought that it was going to retreat dozens of meters to the side of the quarantine wall, it suddenly altered its course. It stubbornly refused to abandon the rift in the wall, which it seemed to consider its post. It seems that it had not recognized that I was a single infantryman and was instead taking random evasive action against an unknown quantity of enemies. A speed of approximately 25 kilometers per hour quite slow, considering that it was running off internal power. I could tell that its sensor, mounted on one side, was scanning for my presence. I already knew. The moment that my first shot had failed to explode, I knew that I had lost the gamble. Had I ears that could listen in on high-frequency radio communication, I would probably be hearing the Fiddler Crab requesting backup from any nearby units right now. Then, in ten minutes, at the soonest, the one human who still breathed in this town would cease to do so. In the midst of this unending rain, the order of this dead town would once again be frozen into place, and my fate would be sealed. I was suppressing the urge to allow a crazy smile to float to my lips. Right. What I had to do still had not changed. I had to silence that fiddler crab as soon as possible. Then, I had to retrieve her and slip past the quarantine wall. As I adjusted the grip on my gun, I recalled the words of the captain who commanded my training corp. Never stop moving. Always angle in towards the defensive perimeter and charge forward without fear. Easy to say, difficult to do. Two AP rounds left. If at all possible, I would have to close in and first knock out a leg. Then I would have to aim for the armored top and destroy it without fail. I took a deep breath and then leapt into the rain. I ran. Having detected me, the fiddler crab slowly slowed down and entered into a strafing sequence. The proximity sensors had painted me and the linked turrets were swiveling in my direction. I sprinted forward, kicking up splashes of mud. The muzzles of the Fiddler Crab's gun split out light. I could see three points of red light scanning the ground before me in lieu of tracer bullets. A line of thin water spouts kicked up before me, trapping me in a transparent cage. The moment I saw that, I changed my attack vector. After a short delay, the sound of machine gun fire rent asunder the sound of the rain falling overhead. A storm of bullets passed through the area that I had stood in just a second ago. It had rectified its aim immediately. I confirmed out of the corner of my eye that the machine gun barrage had stopped for a second. I immediately changed my path even more acutely, planning on doubling back shortly thereafter. It was an old tactic but an effective one. Because of it, I was able to give it the slip for a second time. 
at an edge of the buffer zone that stuck out like a bright head, bridgehead, I came upon the largely intact shell of a puffin heavy APC. I immediately slid down and used it as cover. I would not have to worry about being hit by even HE rounds from here. As long as I stayed closer than the minimum allowable range, I would be in no danger of being targeted by the Fiddler Crab's main armament, its LERC railgun. I quieted my heavy breathing. The shooting died down. It appeared that my opponent had enough sense to not waste ammunition needlessly. The range between the two of us was a little over 200 meters. Now, the hunter would become the hunted. The fiddler crab began a rapid retreat. It was an established tactic to retreat and regroup in the case where one did not know the true strength of one's enemy. The gunfire resumed once again. Strange sounds echoed as the machine gun bullets ricocheted off the armor plating of the APC. It would be difficult to hit a moving target with a relatively slow-moving high-explosive round from a grenade launcher. I would have to no choice but to time the motion of my opponent and lead a shot accordingly. I knew that I was becoming agitated. The blood in my body ran cold and my senses were rapidly sharpening. I suddenly wondered, was she watching? I wanted to tell her that this was what hunting was all about. A ritual of continued bloodshed that mankind had enacted over and over again since the dawn of its history in order to survive. Even though we had once extended our reach into the vastness of space, nothing had really changed. Mankind had now even created for itself game to hunt and had equipped itself with fangs that it had not by design been given. The rain continued to fall. Intermittently shining tracer lights around the nearby emplacements, the fiddler crab continued its evasive action. I angled my grenade launcher obliquely. I pictured the position of the fiddler crab five seconds from now. I used my gun sight to target that area, as if I were sticking a push pin through it. I muttered as I counted to three. I pressed the trigger. The canister drew an arc of white smoke in the air. The fiddler crab was in the very place I needed it to be in, as if we had choreographed our actions. I had scored a direct hit on the unarmored root hip joint of its right hind leg, and after after several dreadfully tense seconds, a burst of flames bloomed on the Fiddler Crab. With a thunderous roar, the Fiddler Crab came to a precarious halt, as if it were going to fall forward. Its huge form inclined slowly. The ventral ammunition container fell from the Fiddler Crab like a rotten fruit with a crash and an explosion. Having lost one of its joints, the Fiddler Crab's frame groaned in a multi-layered cord. I may have let out a sound that was neither a cheer nor a scream at that point. The Fiddler Crab was severely wounded, but it wasn't dead. Its composite armor plates were trembling in anger like a proud old knight. The main battery, which had fallen greatly askew, whirred to life and started to track towards me. I watched this occur as if it were happening in a world far removed from mine. Uh-oh. Now it's its turn. That's gonna hurt. I thought it wasn't supposed to be able to hit us with that. My field of vision disappeared in a storm of pure white. The thunderous sound of metal grinding assaulted my eardrums. A delayed blast shockwave scattered raindrops everywhere in a boisterous dance similar to a storm at sea. The wind whipped about me and my nose was filled with the smell of burning ozone. The next moment, my body flipped into the mud as if it had been thrown by a gigantic hand. A mad buzzing filled my ears. I was blinded and couldn't move my legs. 
They felt as heavy as if they had been cast out of lead. I fumbled around and found that fragments of rubble had toppled over and now blanketed my thighs. I twisted my body about and somehow managed to ex extract myself. Unlike my body, which wouldn't move dexterously at all, my head was swarming with activity. Just now, the fiddler crab had aimed in my direction and fired its main cannon. The slug had veered sharply upward and had struck a building instead of me. It was an attack pattern that couldn't have possibly existed, not against a single infantryman at point-blank range. I tried to move out of the immediate vicinity. If it were running off internal power, then it would take 25 seconds for the LERC on a Type LE to be fully recharged. If I didn't move now, then with the next shot, the building would collapse on top of me. As I made to retreat, I realized that I had no sensation in my right leg. It seemed like it was broken. Both my eyes and my feet now? <laughs> As a dull pain began to creep up from my leg, I started to laugh. Even now, the rain continued to fall. And now, I finally understood the situation. So that thing was broken as well. Embraced in the arms of the unending rain, that mechanized monstrosity of a spearman was still dreaming. Dreaming of the gentle city that it was charged to protect, and of the mighty enemies that it was charged to destroy. I could hear a sound reminiscent of a thundercloud's crackling. Its condenser coils were charging. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. For my part, I could hear the sound of things underfoot and the echoes arising thereof. My eyes would not open, as if they had been run through with splinters. The hood of my waterproof cloak had been ripped off, and so I could feel fragments of concrete falling on me directly overhead. No, these were drops of rain. The rain was simply continuing to fall, as if not a single thing had changed. I had absolutely no idea where I was. I was probably several meters from my starting point, but I didn't know anything other than that. One of my feet got snagged on something, and I tumbled to the ground. My grenade launcher rolled from my hands. The inside of my mouth was cut, and I could taste lukewarm blood spreading out from within. Uh -oh. Three shots. The fiddler crab let out a shriek. I collapsed on the ground as fragments of concrete and glass pelted my waterproof cloak like many tiny bullets. It had hit a building that was very close to me. All I could do was cover my head with my arms and endure it. A few large fragments hit me directly on my back. I could feel the warmth of blood soaking my undergarments and the crevices of my skin. So I, too, was breaking down in the midst of this rain. There was no pain. The only thing was that it was incredibly difficult to breathe. Any more than this, and I wouldn't be able to take a single step further. Even if my eyes were shut, it was easy to tell where the fiddler crab was just by the sound. The three remaining legs would not be strong enough to absorb the recoil of the LR ERC. Every single time it moved, it was destroying its own frame by itself. Every single time it moved, the outcry of warped metal and shredded carbon fiber resonated dissonantly in the air. These sounds were nothing other than its death agony. It's gone mad. I muttered as if someone else could hear my words. <laughs> was it this battle mech which had so lost itself in anger that it was burying everything around it, including the city that it was supposed to protect without regard to friend or foe? Or was it this sarcophagus city, which had ceased to function so long ago, in which now only lived the rain and the memories of those who had once inhabited it? Or perhaps... It was laughing. 
Beyond the rain-soaked wind, that out-of-order battle mech was laughing shrilly. All of the sounds were distorted and yet very distinctly audible. The fiddler crab stopped and then assumed a firing stance. Even if its leg was broken, there was no way I would be able to get out of its sights now. Right. This time around, it would definitely not miss its enemy. That is, unless it had a sliver of reason or mercy left in it. I tried to open my eyes. It was to see for myself the shape of the death that I had been rewarded with. And we're going to have to end it there. Because we are out of time. We're going to have to find out just... How many of us are going to go down at the very end next week? Thank you all for joining me, and I hope you look forward to next episode as much as I do, because I want to know what happens. Are we all going to go down in a rain of fire and rain? Fire or rain? You'll have to find out next time. Until then, as always, go be creative. Go play some other video games and enjoy other people's stories. Go create stories of your own and share them with others so we can all have some fun. And I will see you all next time.